You're tuned into the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and today is Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021, and this is episode 53. We're sharing local news and resources, focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. This month, I've been focusing on the return to in-person instruction in the Davis Joint Unified School District. I've interviewed administration, teachers, and this week I'm speaking with parents who represent different viewpoints on reopening. Dr. Audrey Pan with Safe Classrooms, Safe Community Davis joins me in the first interview, and Dr. Rachel Klein of the DJUSD Parent Coalition, which is affiliated with Open Schools California, also joins me in a second interview. And next week, I'll wrap this month-long series by speaking with several area students. Since I spoke with teachers last week, the county has opened up vaccinations to both area teachers and farm workers, and that's great news. And it's been a delight to see friends from both groups posting their vaccination selfies. The county reminds us, however, that vaccines are still in very short supply and receipt of more vaccines is further slowed by the deep freeze that hit so much of the country last week. I wanna repeat something I shared last week and that's about signing up for the state's My Turn system to be notified when you're eligible for the vaccine. In a nutshell, the county launched its own vaccine interest form before the state program was widely implemented. So even if you signed up with the county, you'll need to sign up anew with the My Turn website. It allows all Californians to register for an email or text notification to inform them when they're eligible for the vaccination. The website is currently available in English and Spanish with an additional six languages coming soon. And if that doesn't work for you or you don't have internet access, you can call 1-833-422-4255 to connect with an operator directly in English or Spanish, or a third party operator for an additional 254 languages. All residents are encouraged to register with MyTurn at myturn.ca.gov. And for more information about Yellow County's COVID-19 vaccine and distribution process, uh, and lots of other info about COVID-19, you can check in at yolocounty.org slash coronavirus dash vaccine. And the Yolo Community Foundation has launched a five-week series of discussions focused on major community needs that have risen in intensity as a result of the pandemic and associated economic crisis. The series launches February 25th with a discussion about Yolo County's children and families and features speakers from the Yolo County Children's Alliance, the County Superintendent of Schools Office, the Yolo Crisis Nursery, and Yolo County Health and Human Services. Subsequent Thursdays will focus on food insecurity, mental health, housing insecurity, and what comes next. All panels are hosted on Zoom Thursdays at 11 a.m. and are free and open to all interested in learning more about the status of our communities in these specific areas. Visit YOLOCF, as in Community Foundation, YOLOCF.org for registration information and details for all five panels. And the mission of the nonprofit YOLO Community Foundation is to inspire and support giving and to inspire philanthropic giving in all our local communities. And on that note, KDRT is a project of Davis Media Access, the only nonprofit community media center in all of Yolo County. We've spent the past year helping other area nonprofits weather the pandemic by providing technical support and staffing for virtual events and public affairs, news and entertainment to help us all get through this time. In addition to hosting this show, I serve as the executive director of Davis Media Access. I have a personal mission in life to connect people and resources in ways that benefit many. And this program has been my labor of love for the community during this time. As I approach the one year mark of doing this show, I'd love to hear if it's been helpful to you. An email, a social media shout out, or a donation of any size goes a long way towards helping us continue this work. You can learn more at kdrt.org. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll be right back with the first interview. 
This month, I'm continuing with my focus on the return to in-person instruction in the Davis Joint Unified School District. This week, I'm speaking with parents who represent different viewpoints on reopening. Joining me now is Dr. Audrey Pan, who represents Safe Classroom, Safe Community, Davis, which describes itself as a coalition of parents, teachers, students, and community members that support an evidence-based, science-supported return to classrooms with the benchmarks set forth by the Davis Joint Unified School District Board of Trustees. She's a family medicine practice specialist in Sacramento, and she has two kids in DJUSD schools. Dr. Pan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. So right now, there are many voices speaking up about the return to in-person instruction, and many are advocating we return now. The school board has outlined a more gradual return with certain internal and external factors in place. Please tell us how and why this coalition came together and what it is you're advocating for. Um, it feels to me that um, uh, the parents that are advocating for um, opening for school now, um, they're really focused on the timeline, like now, 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 mm -hmm. you know? Um, but so our coalition came together is we wanna focus more on the mitigating factors. We also want schools to open. I, you know, everybody wants their kid to go back to school. Um, so I think there's different priorities here. Mm -hmm. Um, so for our priority, and also, by the way, uh, CDC um, clarified their um, uh, criteria for opening school is mask for all. Um, I, I think um, Davis residents in general, um, they're doing okay, I hope, um, uh, for that criteria. But the second criteria is uh, CDC has recommended for grade K to 12, um, six feet distancing is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been to my kids' classrooms. Um, they're just, you know, really small spacing. And I, I, is the DJUSDs going to um, uh, set a limit on the number of students that can be in person or, or, you know, they need to work that out so that the desks can be six feet distancing. So we need to work that out. It's, mm -hmm. Um, and then the next one would be um, weekly testing or, or uh, uh, contact tracing. Right. Um, because there are, there are small cohorts that's going in person right now. And um, all the uh, positive tests are voluntary reporting. And mm -hmm. I, you know, from a medical standpoint, I, it, it just doesn't make sense you know, in a pandemic, how can you voluntary report, oh, I tested positive, or what if some parents choose not to get tested, or, you know, how do you catch asymptomatic spreaders? Right. Those right. are all the questions, you know, how are we going to address that? Are we, um, you know, luckily, we have Healthy Davis together, we have, sounds like we have the funds and means to achieve that. Right. But is DJUSD going to make that mandatory for, you know, adults and kids on a weekly basis um, for, for whoever that choose to be on campus for hours at a time? Um, those personnel definitely need to be tested, Right. you know, and then contact tracing, work that out with the county or public health department. So all those steps needs to be in place. Um, also, another concern is I'm not a ventilation expert. I don't know how, um, you know, upgraded uh, the HVAC system in our in our DGUSD classrooms are. Um, so, so I, I don't know. You know, do we need to? Yeah. How, how are we going to upgrade that if that's needed? Right. Um, so all those things that just need to be set in place, you know, with clear guidelines and procedures and protocols and and who who's gonna be in charge of all that? Are we just gonna put teachers, like teacher report everything? Um, right. You know, it's all those steps. And if all those steps are clearly set in place, then yes, you know, let's go for it. 
Some of the things you've mentioned are what, uh, when I interviewed Superintendent Bose, he described those as the internal factors that were under the control, mm -hmm. things like improving ventilation in classrooms and, and how we distance and having testing on site. But he talked about the external factors that that they really don't have control over. And that was the availability of vaccines um, was, was one of them. And um, I know one thing I've seen your coalition address is the community spread of, of the virus. So you, can you talk about your concerns on those two points, um, the community spread and variance, and then the, the desirability of having staff, teachers and staff vaccinated before return? Um. Uh, so even with the internal factors that DGUSD have control over, the that the pace of uh, that being implemented is like really really slow and frustrating. Yeah. Um, so from my standpoint, um, if we want to put timeline as a priority, um, maybe vaccinating teachers that will be, you know quickest approach versus hiring HVAC specialists or versus, you know, man putting policies uh, manda for mandatory testing. Um, I, I don't know. It seems to me, um, you know, vaccinating teachers, at least we protect the adults on the campus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but, but then again, you know, that's, that's out of our control. It's, we're talking about supply issues. <laughs> yes. Yes. We do have real um, supply issues. Yeah, so we, we you know, in the ideal world, we, we like to have the two-prong approach. Uh, first, like, let's everybody get together, you know, parents, teachers, and, and um, our leaders, school leaders, district leaders to work together on the, on the factors that we can control the internal. And then ex external factors, let's, you know, advocate for teachers to get vaccinated as soon as possible. So to approach, maybe multi-prone approach to get schools open, you know, get everybody happy. Yeah, I, I think, although I talk about two sides of this debate here, I think you're right. You said earlier, everyone would like to see the, the kids back in school and resuming mm -hmm. all the, the enrichment and, you know, learning that happens there. Um, the, the disagreement seems to be over the speed at which this happens. And, and yes. Yeah, I think there are, you know, valid concerns on both sides. What does, from your perspective, what does a safe classroom, safe community Davis believe needs to happen next? And how will you continue to advocate for this process in the coming weeks? Um, just to have the district officials to be transparent, um, uh, especially um, from the medical standpoint, especially for the uh, policies regarding testing, um, whether it's mandatory, whether, um, uh, because as far as I know, um, there is some reporting, there's a total number of uh, positivity rate in the school district, mm -hmm. but we don't know which side is positive. You know, I, I mean, I'm not saying we need to put names or anybody, um, just like a general idea or each school site, how, who's positive. I mean, how many are positive? Mm -hmm. um, so people kind of, people can then make informed decisions, right? You can't just put a vague generalized data out there and how, how am I supposed to make a decision for my kids to return right. uh, when I have no idea who's positive on what campus? Uh, so that's number one. Uh, number two is I still would like to, um, for the parents, we should, get together, regardless of which coalition we belong to, we should advocate for um, vaccinate, vaccinating for teachers, uh -huh. uh, ASAP, um, especially with the emergence of the variant. It's, you know, it, it puts the, it's so much more important for the mitigating factors to, uh -huh. to be in place because this new variant is a lot more transmittable. It's a lot more um, contagious you know, that yeah. that's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I have been interviewing teachers and my, my takeaway from those conversations is that being vaccinated is the number one thing that's going to make them feel that they are valued and supported as teachers before the return to school. Otherwise they feel like they're somehow being, uh, 
as one teacher said to me, she feels like she's being scapegoated. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was like, oh, teachers are wonderful. They're going to get us through this and, and look at our teachers. And now she said, if we're not vaccinated and we're pushed back into schools, that sends an opposite message. So, uh, Yeah, it, it's really heartbreaking because of speaking from the parent standpoint, as parents, we really feel powerless, mm -hmm. you know, because our public schools are chronically underfunded, teachers are undervalued, overworked, you know, and at this point, problem is so complex, and we need so many approaches that, that seems like easiest way just to push the teachers into the classroom. And that's really heartbreaking to me. Yeah. You know, and that's why I want to be part of this coalition as at least to be the group of parents that say, we, we support you teachers. Right. right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for making time to talk about this important topic with me today. I want to let listeners know that Safe Classroom, Safe Community Davis is on Facebook, and you can find there the text of an op-ed uh, that some of the members, including Dr. Pan, wrote and published in the Davis Enterprise on February 11th. Thanks so much. Thank you, Autumn. Bye-bye. This month, I've been focusing on the return to in-person instruction in the Davis Joint Unified School District. This week, I'm speaking with parents who represent different viewpoints on reopening. Joining me now is Dr. Rachel Klein, who represents the DJUSD Parent Coalition, which is affiliated with the Open Schools California movement. Dr. Klein has uh, two children, one of whom is in the DJUSD, and she is an adjunct professor in biological chemistry at Woodland Community College. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for uh, having us. I wanna start this interview by noting two things. As is par for the course during the pandemic, things keep rapidly changing. And teachers I interviewed just last week have now begun getting vaccinated, which is great news, as last week that still seemed to be a somewhat distant reality. The second is that we are pre-recording this interview on February 18th, and there is another DJUSD Board of Trustees meeting this evening. Recent meetings have included a great deal of public comment and have focused heavily on the district's plans to return to in-person instruction. Dr. Klein, I first came to awareness of the DJUSD Parent Coalition when I saw protesters downtown, downtown with open schools now signs. Let's start with telling me who your group is and what you're advocating for, please. Sure, so we are a grassroots group of parents. Uh, we have a wide range of backgrounds. There are many scientists, including myself. Um, there are also physicians, uh, public health official, officials, child psychologists, um, and other parents from all sorts of different careers and walks of life. And we are advocating for the school board to uh, listen to the science, listen to our public health officials uh, in their decisions about reopening our schools. So the, the top experts in the field from World Health Organization, CDC, our California state uh, health officials, and even Dr. Sisson, our own um, Yolo County Public Health Officer, have all recommended at a minimum that elementary school be offered in person at the case rates we, we are seeing um, at the moment. And so we would like the, the school board to um, consider those recommendations from the experts uh, when they're formulating their, their reopening plans. Okay. From your perspective or your organization's perspective, what's at risk if we continue with long-term remote instruction? I, mean, I think the, the risks are just enormous. You know, kids are falling behind. There's all sorts of statistics about it, but I can tell you, you know, my son's a kindergartner and they're supposed to begin their part of their school's reading program, winter start of winter semester, and they've had to push that back because the kids are just not at that level yet and looking at the assessment he's about to have there's you know all this stuff they're supposed to know at the end of kindergarten that he just doesn't know and yeah. you know we've been working behind the scenes to try and help him but it's just online education is just not effective for particularly for the younger kids but i think even there are big limitations for older kids as well mm -hmm. and then so that's one side but also the you know, the health consequences are really, really dire. You have all of these pediatrician groups coming out saying kids need to be in school. This is essential for their mental health, their physical health. We need to get them back. So I think really compelling um, that the, the advocates, the experts in child health are saying as well that kids need to be back. Okay, thank you. 
Public comment from your group at recent school board meetings has been quite heavy. Um, does what you're advocating for put you at odds with what the school board is recommending? And if so, how? I don't think I would consider us at odds. I think we all want our kids back in school safely. Um, so I think we all share the same goal. I think we just would like more of a discussion of the science um, and you know what our public health officials, the really the experts in the field are saying, um, we'd like that to carry more weight with the school board. Okay. Does it, this is a harder question perhaps, because I do think as I talk to more people, I do think everyone has the same goal. There's just differences in, in how and when we get there. But does it put you at odds with teachers? And the reason I wanna ask that question I've interviewed some who said they feel uncertain that they can be safe and they can keep their classrooms safe if they are required to return now before being vaccinated. This may be quickly become a moot point as vaccinations have started, but what are you hearing as, as you talk to teachers in the district? Um, well, I, I hope I'm not at odds with teachers. I am a teacher myself um, and I am currently teaching in person by choice at Woodland Community College. and. I wanna add that all of the biology department is also teaching in person. Um, so every, you know, we all have PhDs. There's even one professor with an MD. We are all have a very high level of expertise. Um, we feel safe to be teaching in person. Um, so I'm not asking anyone to do anything I'm not doing myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, the, the data is clear that transmission is very, very low in schools, if at all. Um, and, I just, you know, we have, my, my younger son goes to preschool in person five days a week. There has been no, um, no transmission. My, um, you know, I know that childcare is open on elementary school campuses at the moment and, you know, they follow the guidelines. There hasn't been transmission. So I think, um, you know, the data is really compelling. Our public health experts are saying this is safe and they do have teachers well-being in mind as well when they say it, when they make their recommendations. Um, so I, um, I'm not at odds with teachers. I guess I just don't fully understand. So I'm looking forward to hearing the other parts of your uh, your interviews because I, as a teacher myself who's teaching in person, who's also a scientist, I don't understand the the fear, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can have more dialogue and figure out what, what would uh, make them feel safe. Okay, thank you for that. We have a few minutes left and I wanna make sure I get to ask this question uh, because you brought it up earlier that the public health experts are recommending that uh, return to, to school to in-person instruction for K through six is um, has been determined to be safe, but not for the higher grades. And I'm hoping you can help explain that distinction for me because I find it a little confusing. Sure, well, first of all, I'm not a public health person. I'm not an epidemiologist, so this is not my, my specialty, but my understanding of the data is that um, uh, what, what we've seen is that younger kids are less affected by COVID and they also seem to be less likely to transmit it. Um, so I think there is a safety argument for bringing back the younger kids first. Um, also, uh, as a parent of a kindergartner, I can tell you it's just, you know, elementary education cannot occur over a screen. It's just not effective. Everything we know about child development says this is not how you do it. So I think there's also that urgency to, uh, you know, get the younger kids back where they can hopefully uh, catch up. Good, thank you. I, I appreciate that explanation. Um, I guess my final question is, are you hopeful that the start of vaccinations locally will shift the timeline or will speed up the timeline for reopening? And I'm, I'm asking for your the parent coalition's perspective on that. Uh, well, we hope so. We are advocating um, that the district follow, uh, you know, Dr. Fauci's recommendations, the CDC's recommendations, all of which say you don't need vaccination to be safe in opening schools for teachers. Um, so hopefully the vaccines are coming. Hopefully teachers can feel safer. But um, we, uh, we stand with the experts who say that's not a prerequisite for opening the schools. Okay. Um, I want to let people know that if you Google DJUSD Parent Coalition, uh, you have quite a, an active website and there are a lot of articles archived there that speak to the perspectives, uh, some of the perspectives you've shared today. So uh, is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap up here? Um, just uh, yeah, check out our website if you have any questions and um, 
I really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to have this dialogue. I'm very curious to uh, to see the other interviews when when they're published. Great, thank you so much. I've been speaking today with Dr. Rachel Klein of the DJUSD Parent Coalition, uh, a parent and activist who is uh, one among many advocating for the return to uh, in-person instruction in DJUSD schools. And you've been listening to the COVID-19 Community Report on KDRT. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and I'll be back next week with the final installment in my series on reopening schools, and I'll be speaking with students. Thanks for tuning in.